Beautiful. Welcome, everybody, to the 30th, no, 30th of November, 2023. We're going to be talking about leveraging ISO, however we pronounce it, ISO 2022. Mario is going to help us with that. How do we pronounce it? Leveraging ISO 2022 in supply chain and trade finance uh, here with uh, blockchain. Mario uh, Reichel. He has a PhD from Potsdam University. He also is a lead payments uh, industry representative at PPI based out of uh, Hamburg in uh, Germany. And I asked around, hey, who knows ISO 2022 really well? Mario's name came up pretty darn fast. So that's great. Mario also presented almost three years ago to the, the trade finance group. So welcome back, Mario, uh, to here. One of the things that's really interesting for all of us here on this uh, session is that uh, Mario is the leader of the non-finance implementation committee for this ISO standards. So that's great. And he has lots of banking experience. So that's that also really helps here since that's the real life that we're talking about here. So agenda uh, here before I turn it over to uh, Mario, uh, hype word. Uh, part of the Linux Foundation here at Hyperledger, Supply Chain and Trade Finance, uh, SIG. All are welcome. So we're glad you're all here, whether uh, uh, listening live and watching live or you're watching us and listening on YouTube. Uh, also, from an antitrust perspective, this is all an open group here. So please don't say anything that's confidential or you don't want anything out there since this is an open group. Uh, this is our last session for 2023. So Mario, we're saving the best for last year. Uh, there are a couple of events here. There's a Hyperledger Memory Summit if you happen to be around Tokyo on December 4th. And then we will kick things back off on January 11th in the new year here, where we'll plan out what we're gonna do in 2024. We'll say it was a lot of fun this year working on the ebook and bringing that to fruition. And so now we're looking to create something similar that is value to the uh, community in 2024. So I, you don't have to wait till January 11th. If you want to send emails, post something in the wiki, post something on the, on the uh, LinkedIn uh, group that you're interested or you think that we could provide added value out there. And certainly if you uh, join us on January 11th, then we can have further discussions and figure out what we're going to do in 2024 and have some fun. Uh, let's see here. So presentation. So Mario, I'm going to stop sharing and turn this over to you. And Mario, uh, okay, it has to uh, now. Now I can start. And if I'm not mistaken, now you are seeing the presentation, right? We are seeing yep. a presentation. And Mario, would you, would you like questions along the way or would you like to go through your presentation and questions at the end? Uh, questions on the way. Just jump in and ask. Uh, if it is maybe on a later slide, I can I can drop that. Uh, but anyway, don't, don't make a hard... Uh, Scrumble, uh, if you have a burning question, just, just out. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you, Mario. Yeah. Uh, it, so, it's all yours. Yeah, 20 minutes, and then we can discuss afterwards anyway. So uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Tom, for the uh, right, uh, uh, fine uh, intro. And you jumped about uh, something that ISO 20 or 22 is a standard. But some people say it's not a standard is because uh, people pronounce it differently. 222, uh, 2022, 2022, or something else. Uh, it's um, yeah. That's uh, at least at least the start. Um, actually, Did, I was we vote on that, Mario. Should we at the end here? Well, how we want to describe it? Um, I, I'm joking. I'm often, joking. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm very often saying. Uh, 2022 because if you say 222 it, it sounds like 222 right so <laughs> Good how, point. How, do, how, how how do you get that yeah and uh, a five digit number selling by every digit it's it's quite long so 222 it's kind of a mixture uh, of that anyway 
it is a standard. This is for sure. And I would like to show you uh, what uh, is about the harmonizing that standard, why that that comes from. And at the end, um, and at the end, I have a real life example uh, of a blockchain platform. Uh, but that's that's at the end, the very very last slide. Um, I didn't dare to put um, agenda slides uh, in between, so I'm just moving on, right? Um, yeah, Tom introduced me, so I would like to introduce you to my company because they, they pay the bill. Uh, so uh, it's, it might be worth it uh, to tell you that PPI is a software and solution company uh, uh, based in Hamburg. I work in Frankfurt office. Uh, we have other offices in Paris, Zurich and Milan. So we are uh, European focused and European, European based. Um, uh, we do offer products for payments uh, from end to end in the, in the classical way. And we offer a consultancy for everything that's around uh, payments. So that's, that's enough for the, for the intro. Let's dive into the standard 2022 definition and roles. What is it? And especially what, what it's not. Um, the ISO standard 2022, uh, funny number, um, is not um, a standard uh, of a message set or um, um, messages. It's rather a recipe. Uh, it's, it specifies rules and the met methodology uh, for how to develop uh, messages. Um, of course, it is mostly known uh, as an XML standard because that was the very first one. Uh, in the second version of that ISO standard, it also has an ASN1 um, as another available syntax. Uh, right now, uh, the committees are working uh, on uh, the JSON implementation of that standard uh, in so that we can go for the for the API world. It is supported by Swift. It's not the Swift standard. Uh, so it's uh, um, the for for the global Swift migration, as we will see that later on. Um, it is very important for Swift, and Swift is important for the standard because they are the so-called registered authority. They provide the website 20, uh, ISO 20 or 22. Uh, dot org, uh, where you can find by now more than 740 uh, different messages from different areas and um, more than 20 organizations are involved alongside uh, with SWIFT. Uh, fun fact, Ripple is also involved in that, uh, in those uh, committees. Um, okay. Um, if we talk about payments, um, I often come across the so-called four corner model that you have on the on the right on the right hand side here. Uh, we have the the debtor, the creditor, debtor bank, and creditor bank. The fifth corner of that four corner model is since uh, since SEPA twenty years by now um, the so-called CSM the um, clearing and settlement mechanism uh, defining the way how the money would move uh, from uh, debtors bank to creditors bank um, and uh, xml by iso 20 or 22 messages is um, very often told um, by the abbreviation the, the first block that is the business domain if you want to define it uh, uh, more closely, then you have the pain one or pain one uh, abbreviation. That is the payment initiation credit transfer. Actually, that was the very first ISO uh, 2022 message uh, defined in 2004, as uh, four organizations came together and defined the um, uh, core payment kernel. Uh, because it was derived from the initiative of corporate banks and vendors uh, in the early 2000s, uh, they wanted to go for a bank agnostic 
channel agnostic and um, product agnostic uh, way to initiate a payment from a corporate to a bank. Uh, and that was the very beginning. Uh, and the payment initiation, therefore, the pain 001 is the very first message. Uh, the uh, third part is the so-called variant. Um, you would rather not see any other variant than the variant number one. It's a difficult uh, uh, question, and um, that's, that's too much to say about. Uh, the most important uh, credit transfer uh, message in XML by ASA 2022 is the version 9, uh, because that is from the uh, so-called ISO 2022 release 2019. That is a very important one because the whole world, almost the whole world, uh, goes into, into this release. Um, the ISO messages, um, as they are called, are not just for that rectangle of the four corner model, so for the payment initiation. We also have uh, interbank messages that are those tax payment clearing and settlement messages. That is the information taken from the uh, payment initiation and put into the interbank message um, <clears throat> by the same uh, methodology that ISO 2022 uh, defines. So there we have the PAX messages to uh, transport the information uh, from left to right. And the reporting message then is a so-called CAMT, a cash, cash management message. And the statement message is a come come 53 uh, in that example. There are many, many more business domains. Uh, for example, ACMT, that's not a typo, it's a different business domain, account management. That's about, uh, that That are messages, uh, for example, in the customer to bank space uh, to open a new account in an existing relationship uh, to change uh, um, business rights, access rights for certain users to close an uh, access right for a certain user and so on. That's a whole series of messages. But we also have uh, trade messages, collateral messages, uh, as you have seen that here. Uh, there are uh, message definitions in, in the card areas, as I said, 740. Just crawl through the website uh, iso2022.org. You will see many, many uh, of those uh, messages in different uh, business domains and purposes and uh, many different versions. As ISO is a standard, they have a yearly release. Every year, um, if a message changes, there, there's an open change request process and then a committee that uh, um, yeah accepts those change requests, uh, if applicable, and then you get a new uh, version of a certain of a certain message. Um, what else to say? On the ISO website, uh, you find that the booklet ISO 2022 for Dummies. It's now already the fifth uh, um, uh, edition of that. Um, it's helpful and easy to read. Um, it's all those uh, four dummy uh, booklets um, uh, quite fine. So how's a how's a, uh, message look like that XML. Of course, you know that XML has those tags. And uh, for example, an address information uh, comes with a name tag uh, and the postal address. And the uh, beauty of ISO 2022, one part is that it is a very structured uh, message uh, syntax. So we have a street, the building name, postcode, um, and much more. You have about 20, 25 different uh, tags that uh, defines in a very structured way the address as well as uh, account numbers, routing numbers, uh, codes, and so on. Uh, in that uh, 2019 release, we have dedicated tags for the so-called UETR, that's very important on the SWIFT network for track and tracing of, of messages. Uh, you have dedicated reference numbers. Uh, the end-to-end -end reference is a reference that goes uh, 
in the whole four corner model. It has to be transported from the debtor to the uh, to the creditor, uh, as it is called, end to end reference. It's for for business reasons where the UETR is also called end to end reference, but that's more a technical address. You have transaction and uh, instruction address uh, uh, references. One is uh, a point to point reference from one bank to the next. And the other is uh, instructing uh, in the in the very beginning. Uh, yeah, that's. Hey, Mario, can I ask a, this is Tom. Can I ask a question here? Yes, of course, um, anytime. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, so I see this XML here, and I, I, maybe you'll talk about this in the future. If so, then just say you know, put, hang loose. Is are there tools to build this XML already out there? Is this built into Accounts payable, accounts receivable, software. You know, how, how, who who does this work in order to build up these payments kind of stuff, or do you got to start from scratch and build your own custom XML kind of stuff? Um, uh, XML uh, in in the early two thousands, uh, XML was chosen as a representation uh, because it was uh, fancy and modern at that time, and uh, there had been uh, public and open uh, knowledge uh, tools out there for, for XML. XML is nothing special for the financial industry. Uh, it's almost everywhere. Uh, as you might know that XML and uh, our website, HTTP, uh, HTTP um, uh, is uh, pretty, pretty similar. Um, all this and there are open tools out there but of course if you have an, an ERP or a treasury management system uh, then the vendor will take care of um, uh, producing uh, the file that uh, has to go from a from a debtor to debtor agent and the uh, payment platforms out there different vendors as PPI is one of them um, as well take care that the pain is processed into a fax. Uh, okay. That type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's good for now. Thank you. Yeah. So Mario, okay. this is Joe. Just a real quick question. I'm making an assumption that these are encrypted messages as they go across. From, yes, of from, course. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know what crypt cryptography you're using? Is it uh, are giving the who has the? I guess who has the private key on these encryptions? Is it? Yeah, the initiator. That, that's that's a very good thing about um, that that XML by ISO twenty twenty two because it's uh, it's uh, uh, defined without uh, without defining uh, the channel and the transport. You can transport um, that kind of XML via the the easiest way would attach it to an email without any encryption. Uh, you can send it via via FTP and Q. Uh, you can send it via the SWIFT network. You can send it via a uh, common um, or um, proprietary uh, communication tools like like Ebix that is very popular uh, out here in uh, uh, Europe. Um, AS, what's called AS two in the in the Americas. Um, anyway, so. Um, Okay. The the format is is the format, and as we see on the next page, uh, there are many many communities that uh, uh, so far already or have planned uh, in near future to jump on that uh, standard in order to to use it. Um, as I mentioned, or did I? Did I? I anyway, uh, two thousand four was invented. That was a time where Europe went to something called SEPA, the Single Euro Payment Area, where the different uh, local domestic payment formats uh, had to had to vanish uh, and to be uh, put together to a single Euro payment area. Uh, so we so we dropped those fixed length format that we had in in Germany and in uh, France and in other countries. Uh, Austria was already on an Standard called Edifact. Uh, others had the more uh, Swift MT-like standard, and uh, with that 
uh, XML by ISO 2022 uh, coming across around the corner, the uh, 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 European Payment Council, the, the scheme owner of the of the, all those SEPA schemes uh, jumped onto that and was more or less uh, the very uh, first uh, clearing and settlement mecha uh, mechanism um, to, to use ISO 2022. And after that, many others uh, domestic uh, regions uh, jumped onto that. Uh, and 2018, the global SWIFT community decided we want to migrate uh, from the old uh, proprietary uh, so-called MT standard uh, to that um, now global standard ISO 2022. And the the decision was at that time that we go to the uh, ISO release 2019. Um, it started uh, this year, March 20, uh, in the year 2023, and it's not a big bang migration. Uh, it's a so-called coexistence phase. So the global community of uh, SWIFT correspondent banking, uh, some already uh, migrated some of those 11,000 banks and others will follow. Uh, latest numbers is about 18% of the message volume uh, is ISO. Uh, two more years to come. So you have the usage of those uh, message standard in different communities already. But if you want to send, for example, from Switzerland to India a message, you have to go more or less via SWIFT. And this you can do by now uh, in the standard ISO 20022. You can imagine if many communities jump onto a standard, they derive uh, variants uh, and different flavors. Uh, and therefore, we got an initiative by the uh, so-called CPMI, that is the, the Committee on Payment Market Infrastructure, uh, an uh, industry body um, that is um, on a G20 level, on a global level of uh, the, the those G20 countries, uh, they have seen uh, the uh, movement of many countries moving to uh, ISO 2022. Uh, and now SWIFT is moving to that standard as well as we are now uh, are using different uh, dialects of ISO 2022, they came along and said, uh, let's harmonize uh, the different dialects and the usage of the huge standard um, and uh, different initiatives along the chain of a payment um, have, uh, have to come together. Uh, in the customer to bank space, uh, we have that initiative uh, CTIMP, it's called Common Global Implementation Market Practice Group, that also is a free initiative of uh, banks, corporates, and vendors uh, for a harmonized usage of ISO um, 2022 XML messages in the customer to bank space. Uh, if you talk about uh, different uh, clearing and settlement systems, especially high-value payments, so-called RTGS systems, then uh, you have the harmonization initiative It's called HVPS+. And if you talk about clearing systems that are rather uh, even, even faster on the way, uh, real-time payments or instant payment systems, you have the initiative, um, harmonization initiative, instant payment plus, IP+. Plus, huh? And now SWIFT, with their uh, variant of ISO 2022 usage, uh, that's called cross-border payment and reporting. And they put the plus uh, at the end of their uh, harmonization initiative as well. So you have uh, different initiatives along the way. Uh, the statement at the end, the COM53 that, that I mentioned already, uh, is again by the standard of of CGIMP, uh, where it uh, happens that I'm a co-convener of that uh, initiative, a non-financial co-convener of that. 
So in here, we come and say, uh, let's harmonize usage. What is the rich uh, and, and structured uh, beauty of ISO 2022? Some richer data elements that you might not have in other uh, formats is, uh, for example, let, let pick me um, the ultimate depth and ultimate creditor uh, data elements, the end-to-end -end, uh, reference we talked about already. Uh, ultimate depth and creditor, what, what is that? Uh, that's, for example, in a corporate environment, if you have uh, the a buyer that has to pay something to, to the seller, but uh, the buyer is the subsidiary of uh, the buyer's parent uh, company, then you have uh, usually or very often uh, a situation that you have a payment factory, shared service center or something like this in that big uh, um, company, company structure. So they have to pay, but the seller needs to know who is really paying then you can put uh, the details of the buyer in the so-called ultimate debtor data elements and the payer itself as a debtor uh, is uh, with its details as an account owner for transparency reasons um, that needs to uh, be uh, put um, into, the, into the payment chain so that we have a full transparency who's paying by whom orders and so on. Um, so you have the ultimate debtor. Of course, you can have the same structure on the on the creditor side. Then you then you would talk about the ultimate creditor situation. Uh, we have as richer data elements also in structured remittance information. You might know that uh, other uh, payment formats have, uh, if you take. Um, yeah, different different formats. The the standard uh, Swift MT uh, 103 has 140 characters. Uh, that is the uh, basic um, information structure in ISO 2022 as well. But that's so, the so-called unstructured remittance information. Uh, we also have a structured remittance information where you have about 150 different tags. A data element that you can put into the into the message, and you can uh, uh, pay up to uh, I don't know uh, ninety invoices with credit notes and so on. And uh, you have uh, as as the uh, creditor receiving that information, you don't have to guess what uh, invoice was paid. Uh, it's all in the structured remittance information and dedicated here. Um, and much more, um, we can dive into that deeper. So in, with all those harmonization and uh, initiatives and communities, different dialects in the usage, uh, that CPMI uh, initiative uh, did the consultative report uh, last year. And out of that report, um, many uh, many stakeholders in the global payment community answered uh, to the um, how many was it uh, eighteen uh, suggestions uh, what to harmonize um, in in the ISO structure. Uh, they now uh, published uh, the uh, report of all the con consultation. And they came up with those 12 basic requirements I put in here uh, to save some space. Um, I uh, uh, moved together the uh, identity, uh, identify all entities and persons involved in a structured way. So that actually are two. And so we have 12 here uh, and some some details, for example, is um, the core message set. Uh, one other beautiful aspect about ISO 2022, it's uh, taking care not only for the happy flow of messages, uh, it also takes uh, it also takes care of um, unhappy flows. 
for example, there is a dedicated recall message, so COM56. Uh, there are reminders, returns, PAX4, uh, and so on. Investigation request, requests uh, we get uh, in the um, next release of the uh, CBPR plus account 110 and 111 all in a structured way and uh, no free text uh, with code words and so on uh, and we get that uh, structured uh, one requirement just to uh, name another one is to identify all financial institutions involved in the payment chain in a standardized way international uh, standards so that's either um, a business identifier code the so-called swift uh, code or the legal entity identifier another uh, international code where you can uh, easily identify that is exactly the one uh, that is talking about um, that all is required by all those rtgs systems they each the high value payment systems uh, till November 2027. Uh, it's not that long anymore. And uh, some of those responded to that uh, report that they um, uh, welcomed the report and say it's a challenge, but I have not seen any uh, respond to to the report where an RTGS system says we will not. Uh, UK, for example, um, mentioned that they will uh, uh, comply with those requirements till 20, end of 2025 already. Uh, even the SIPS system, the uh, Chinese um, uh, proprietary uh, system in China, um, but using IC2022 messages uh, mentioned that they will uh, follow the requirements. And that is very necessary because if you see the interlinking of global trade and global payments that comes along, is uh, this is important. Uh, talking about the global Mario, trade. Can I, Mario, can yeah. I make one comment there? So could you go back one chart, please? So... Uh, this 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 report when I saw a little blurb on it a couple of months ago was actually yep. the genesis for this session here because I saw it and I said yep. hey, this is something that is valuable for us from the blockchain community because basically now things are laid out for how money can flow in a standard way and one of the biggest challenges associated with blockchain mutation is all the difficulties associated with both transport as well as the semantics of how whatever sort of data set that you're working with here. Yeah. And, you know, not surprising that it's taken years, years to get here. I know, I think a few years ago, we had the uh, um, folks with, with phishing and it took them three, four years to get their standards set for some of the semantics. And so this is really good. So if you're building a blockchain based system out there, you know, this is the way to go is my takeaway, Mario, if you can yeah. confirm that. And if, if you're, going to be using a blockchain based system and you, you need to integrate in now you know how to integrate in also is is was is kind of my takeaway from this if that makes sense any other comments to that i will jump on to that comment in the next slide uh you mentioned that um the standard is used to uh to move money i would rather uh put it a little bit around uh, the standard is used to move information around. Uh, if you see that uh, correspondent banking chain uh, in a uh, so-called uh, direct and cover uh, payment method, the, uh, the cover message, uh, the pay actual payment is uh, transported by a PAX9 message uh, from course one correspondent bank to the other. Uh, the real money is moved uh, in the country of uh, the currency via an RTGS system uh, and so on. Uh, the information is sent in a direct and cover mode uh, used uh, directly to the uh, creditor bank. Um, that information 
the money is moved from account to account in the old fashioned way as you can think of. Correspondent banking is called correspondent banking because it was invented by the by the uh, merchants in the medieval time where they wrote a letter, a correspondent to their to their office in the other uh, city. Please pay from my account to the beneficiary. And those Loro Nostro accounts, Vostro, Loro, Nostro, whatever you name it, uh, is still the same method to move value, to move the money. The information is now on the edge uh, that it is done by a standard way, uh, by different dialects, of course, but still the same language. Uh, on, an, on a global level in a uh, way where the methodology uh, defines a data dictionary and, a, and a, a party is a party and an account is a count. Everybody understands in that language uh, the same with those notions. Um, by the way, banks that move from MT to M, uh, XML messages, ISO 2022, they have to learn a totally different language. But uh, the money is still moved uh, from account to account. Blockchain might be lead to a totally different paradigm. And even our friends from SWIFT look into this. Um, blockchain technology, uh, CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies. Uh, they even talk about, um, ah, that might be different. Uh, central bank digital currencies in different areas and they uh, offer that they could become a uh, CBDC connector uh, so stay in business so to speak uh, moving the information hosting the standard the data dictionary uh, and so on uh, and um, uh, connect via their transaction manager uh, in the in the center um, and yeah uh, uh, be able to to move uh, the value in a different way than uh, than from account to account and uh, that that BIS that um, presented the the report uh, CPMI I have shown, they are also in the business of cryptocurrencies. So they just um, published uh, October 23. It's, it's not that old. It's very fresh. Uh, consideration for the use of stablecoin co I'm sorry. Uh, stablecoin arrangements in cross-border payments. Yeah? Uh, it's not that thick of an, of an report, but it discusses the, the um, important parts if you are not in a uh, blockchain environment where you talk about the uh, central bank digital currencies, but if you talk about um, stablecoin environments. So somehow that all comes together. And at the very end, uh, I promised you a real life uh, example of a blockchain uh, environment and I'm totally fan of um, that uh, Themis um, project uh, it's called even though it is uh, not global it is just euro uh, and the first proof of concept for that was just uh, between two chemi chemical um uh, companies, Evonik on one side and BASF on the other side. Uh, it's kind of a role model um, for that kind of stuff uh, because uh, it is not just um, about moving the value and uh, uh, secured by, an, uh, by all the uh, beauty things of um, blockchain technology. Uh, it is um, in the heart, uh, it is an uh, order confirmation 
uh, matching system, uh, they, those two companies have uh, inside that, uh, that blockchain uh, a number of data points defined uh, uh, together, agreed upon, uh, where uh, the order um, is placed on the on the blockchain and the the um, the uh, buyer is informing uh, the seller uh, to accept that order and then they uh, do the normal business stuff uh, as as you would do in a uh, business environment um, and then uh, at a certain point you get the confirmation to that uh, into the blockchain as well. Uh, the beauty is that both companies uh, have uh, at a certain point in, at, at, the, at their nodes um, the the truth. Uh, so there is no um, reconciliation needed. And then defined by a, by a, a smart contracts, you get an automatic payment uh, done. And you need to uh, to uh, provide um, yeah appropriate liquidity to your wallet. Uh, both companies have a wallet. Uh, so far, it is connected to the same bank. In this uh, case, it is Commerce Bank uh, here in Germany, where uh, they provided the the e money license to get that done. And uh, Commerce Bank has also uh, some nodes in the in the network for regulatory reporting so that there is no money laundering uh, and they can do their anti-terrorist finance checks and so on. Um, but the whole system then works without any uh, payment initiation message. Uh, clearing and settlement is done all in the system. You don't need an uh, structured remittance information with uh, uh, batching uh, 90 uh, or more invoices because it's all done single by single. The, the treasurer or the, the cash management uh, colleagues, uh, so to speak, quote unquote, just have to take care that uh, there is enough liquidity in the wallet. Uh, they don't have to care about uh, the single payment because it's done automatically uh, by the system I, I said already. Um, uh, and in the system, you have uh, all the data you need, and of course, you need those data into uh, in your ERP systems, and that's done via via API. And those APIs talk about uh, the business content, um, and uh, they could be done easily in the context of ISO 2022. So that's- so Mario, Mario, just to confirm this against Tom on that chart, the key here, there, there's when the payments are done or the information is moved back and forth as you specified there, um, yeah. Commerce Bank in this case did not get involved other than make sure that both Yovanic and BASF both had money in their wallet, in effect, right in their account. That's that's really what their involvement is in this. Yeah, they they provide. Uh, um, what's the role of Commerce Bank? Of course, with that regulatory stuff on one side. On the other side, they are the uh, um, they are the uh, borderline between uh, real life fiat money, the gyro money on the on the standard gyro account. Uh, that the companies have, that they put the e-money into the wallets, uh, but Commerce Bank doesn't have to take care that in the wallet is enough money. That's the the duty of the cash manager of Ivonic, uh, respectively, uh, BSF. Got it. Okay. Yeah? Good. So Thank you. The cash manager is essentially the consensus for the blockchain? No, the, the consensus? Tra the transaction is valid? The consensus mechanism is uh, actually uh, built into the smart contract that uh, the order and the confirmation match into 100%. If not, it pops up um, uh, for an, um, what's called, not, not an investigation, um, 
uh, it pops on, on on either side, actually on both sides, uh, pops it up a uh, message saying, uh, here's an order that doesn't match the confirmation uh, okay. into a certain data point in there uh, is is not is not valid. Yeah. So I was told uh, uh, such an not matching uh, was in the in the past. For example, uh, one company ordered uh, a certain chemical in in uh, kilogram, and the confirmation was in ton, uh, or vice versa, uh, something like this. So um, you have the same number. Uh, but a totally different uh, um, amount that is behind the number, so it doesn't match, and uh, that's that's easy, and it does not uh, it does not lead to an to an uh, a standard business uh, would lead to the, the invoice uh, then is about that uh, different amount, even though it's the same number, uh, but that would lead to an investigation and to a delay in the payment and so on and so on. Uh, and now you got that in the first place. And the the data points, uh, order confirmation delivery and all this is in the platform. Um, and the, nobody has to decide whether the payment is due or not. Um, the system does. You don't have any payment run anymore to send the payment initiation file to the bank. It's all in the system. Yeah, and the data points uh, defined by a yeah you could easily define that by 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 the uh, means of uh, the data dictionary uh, that comes out of uh, ISO twenty or twenty two. Good. All right, do you have one more chart, or should we open it up for questions here? I'm I'm done with the chart. Chart. Uh, I uh, was eager to have only a few to have more time for uh, discussions. Okay. Well, we'll open for questions here. So if you'd like, you can either put it in the chat uh, if you're live here, which all of us are right now who are listening to this, or feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question associated with uh, what Mario has shared and what your, your understanding is. In the interim, uh, either Andrea, while we're waiting for questions, either Andrea or Ihan, either one of you has any thoughts that you want to uh, take Mario's thoughts and expand upon them? Uh, I was thinking about something a long time ago, actually, you see that, uh... Trade finance actually is not about payment only. Uh, we're talking about messaging, and I was uh, wondering to ask Mario the impact of ISO 2022 to on um, the traditional trade finance messaging system. How this is set to revolutionize the traditional messaging, for instance, not only in open accounts, but for instance, in documentary credit. Is there any yep. news over? In that space, you yeah. see that they do invest a lot, the logistic and supply chain side. So yeah. Yeah. Kind of in two different things in only one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, the bodies in ISO twenty twenty two are uh, uh, separated into different business areas. So there's a uh, payment sec uh, standard innovation group is a SEG sec um, and many others for cards uh, and so on uh, it was the last couple of years uh, it was very silent uh, about trade finance change requests and, and definitions so the trade finance sec actually uh, was uh, put down 10 years ago or something uh, but because of requests from the from the community by from the from the ISO community from the users, uh, the trade finance um, sec was reopened. So they start discussing uh, change requests on the trade finance uh, messages. Um, the 
old fashioned, the legacy uh, format MT uh, is also moving. We just had in the in the Swift network um, um, a, a major release coming in two years uh, about the MT. Uh, 798 MT60 and serious uh, messages. Um, even more um, release and change requests are coming. And uh, on the other end, um, ICC and Swift uh, just published um, their uh, new APIs about uh, guarantees. Uh, um, of course, that's only one part of uh, trade finance, letter of credits uh, are more complicated. Um, but um, with those few examples, you can see that there is movement in the area. Good question, I, Mario. I, I, sorry, Tom. No, go ahead, Ayan. I know. I, I I I just first of all thank you to Mario for his kind presentation. It is quite in, invaluable, quite having the so many information. When I think of the blockchain, life is really easy. When we think of the, the <laughs> legacy systems, it's hard to implement any things. It's quite hard to do some things. Uh, you have to do many things indeed, but uh, but the. When I think of the financial institutions, they will have to accept the role of the blockchain in the soon future. Indeed, that 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 is the one of the point which we should emphasize always. Uh, when we think of the legacy uh, legacy payments, for example, structured remittance information, which is the nine hundred, which is the nine thousand character, is available, but it's quite hard to implement it which requires the bilateral agreement between the parties. That's why lots of things have to be done, but all we need to raise the awareness of the global community and we need to share the uh, more and more uh, use cases, depending on the harmonized data, depending on the standardized data, uh, that will help us to understand the global community, what will benefit from these points. Uh, the journey has just started. Uh, legacy system has already have their own standardization rules in their hand, which they will use. I'm sure they will make some kind of benefit, but which will definitely take so many time. But the, on the other hand, when we think of the, the on-chain solutions, life is quite easy, quite implement, quite easy to implement. But uh, no more need to more no more need to go into more details of the why such solutions are uh, not to be easily implemented by the financial in institution. It is a big question, Marks, in all in all minds, I guess. Uh, that that that's that's the reason. Uh, what I would like to say, ERP systems, uh, quite important when I think of the legacy system, ERP is the starting point, ERP is the end point. Yeah. If, we, if, we, if we forget the, these points with an on-chain solution or without on-chain solution, we have nothing in our hand. That's the reason, that's the reason uh, all the treasury solutions, what, whether whether they will they will give the any trade finance uh, functionalities or not, but they have the, some kind of the treasury management functionalities, lot in lot. Uh, that's that's the that's the reason uh, I will I will personally put, put my personal focus on more or uh, ERP developers. They will they will they will be the a game changer in the future if they really understand the power of the uh, uh, structured data, moving their moving their platform to the banks and the to the creditor agent to the creditor and the even the ultimate creditor. That's that's the that's the reason. Uh, I guess uh, ERP systems is going to be a great great role in the future. And the, we need to. I I personally put my attention uh, how I will be supporting them in the soon. And thank you very much. And the, we need more use cases to see, and we need to make the more collaboration to develop 
to increase the awareness of the ISO 20022. Uh, that's the journey has just started, long way to go. I'm not sure whether, whether, whether I can see or not, but uh, it, is just, it is just started, but uh, there is no way to run away from the standardization. And the, that is the only way we have to obey its rules. Indeed. And the, that's that's the, my idea indeed. And the, thank you so much. And the, I would like to, it's my honor to share with the same online webinar with Mario that Mario always focusing the same uh, idea. What, what, which is that? Info, info with movement of the money. That is the crucial point. Yeah. That is that is the crucial point. And the, I wish all the blockchain solutions, whatever they are, put their attention on that point. Yeah. Money movement from account to account, wallet to wallet, without any without any info is nonsense. That's the reason. That's the reason. Uh, any layer one solution uh, should put their attention. Uh, to be aligned with these uh, prerequisites uh, to increase their awareness of their uh, cryptocurrencies. And the, uh, thank you. Thanks so much, Maria. Thanks, Ian. I got that too, loud and clear. It's information moving, not money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We should we should always keep it in your mind. Thanks to Maria that <laughs> I, I have put in, in my mind always. <laughs> Yep. So, so along that lines here, Richard, uh, there's there, uh, Mario, there's two questions here. We're going to go over a couple minutes if people can go over a couple minutes here. There's a okay. question here. There's two questions. One is along the lines of what we just talked about here uh, from Ricardo. Transfers are either done from one account to another or even through the blockchain. But how about the supporting documents, contracts, invoices, IDs be exchanged securely? After all, the MLRO won't approve unless he has everything associated with the transfer, right? I don't know what an ML, MLRO is. Me neither. Ricardo, if you could um, maybe... Uh, money, 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 money laundering, risk officer, things like that. Ah, uh, money laundering. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. In, in, um, that's, that's, that's why in that Themis uh, project, uh, Commerce Bank has a note uh, for them as well uh, to access the data to do their uh, anti-terrorist uh, financing uh, duties, uh, anti-money laundry and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, if you move money as a certified uh, payment service provider, uh, then you have to abide, uh, obey uh, all those rules. Um, AML, uh, ATF, and, and so on. Uh, and that's, that's, um, that's coming along. And if you have just the money movement without any information, then you run into the risk that this money movement is blocked. Huh? Uh, it, is in, uh, it is derived from the... Uh, um, FATCA, no, not, it's not called FATCA, um, the FATF, the Financial um, uh, uh, Action Task Force uh, about the uh, anti-money laundry um, that uh, if you send money uh, from um, debtor's name, for example, one of our customers, such a movement has to be blocked. Uh, you need the transparency and you need to transport that via uh, appropriate information in the data dictionary uh, of ISO 2022 or the, the formats that are used, XML uh, by ISO 2022, uh, give a, give a um, uh, the st structured way of, of checking that. Uh, just the, the recent uh, example, uh, the sanctions uh, had just been moved from uh, sanctions by country into sanctions by regions. Uh, where does it come from? Um, from the from the Ukraine uh, war, where um, the West Ukraine is uh, free uh, to do trade with, uh, but the Donbas region, where the Russians are um, invaded, uh, there you are not allowed to 
to do trades. And therefore, uh, the minimal uh, requirement for structured information of addresses is that you have not just the country code uh, in the structured way, but also the town. So that you can check whether the town is in a region for sanctions or not. And you don't want to pick this in a uh, free floating 140 character address out of that. Because if you have an if you have a payment to to a, a Cuba Libre bar uh, at a certain street in California, then if it is a free text address, this would lead to a hit, of course, because Cuba is sanctioned. But if you have all those information, as I had that on the, on the slide, uh, if you have that in the name only and the country code is uh, uh, California US, uh, then it's fine and can um, uh, process uh, as SDP manner without any frictions. And that's what we want. Uh, one of those uh, goals of the uh, CPMI harmonization is that we have 75% of all the payments globe on a global level done within an hour. Good deal. Huh? Huh? Good. So it's not just for some area, instant, real-time. Uh, in Europe, we have that uh, definition, instant is in 10 seconds. You have that on a global level. Huh? Right. Uh, SWIFT, by their, their GPI and UTA, U, UETR, uh, things say they have statistics that 50% of all payments are final and paid to the creditor in one hour. 95% um, are done final in one day, uh, but it's uh, a bit way to go till we till we get that one hour for 75% of all payments. Good. So since we're over time here, <laughs> Uh, Mario, I'm going to ask. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, can I? Can we just over time? Can I ask? Okay. There's one in the chat here that I'd like to grab. That's first. what I was going to ask. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, so, Mario, quick 30 second reply here. There's a, a thought here about plans for ISO 20022 aligning with other standards work here. And specifically, there's one around a telecommunication standard in the chat here. Which I can send you later, but just give, just give your quick thoughts on that here. Um, so the question is how how uh, ISO standard works together with other standards. Yes. In terms of uh, data dictionary or so, um, yeah, if, if you, you can map everything to to everything, um, but th there is a risk of of translation. Uh, if you if you uh, come along with the telecommunication in terms of transport, uh, security, and so on, you can transport uh, any message with any with the, the, the ISO message is channel agnostic. Good. Okay. Um, and and Mario, do we have your email? Are you open to uh, follow up questions course. from people? Okay. Yes. Good. And uh, what's asking about presentation, we'll create the PDF and we'll put it onto the agenda yep. Uh, yep. here also. With, so thanks for that. So for those who have uh, stuck around, beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, for those who ask questions, thank you for that. Uh, Mario, we'll, we'll get uh, your email. If you want to mention it right now, you can either put it on the chat while I'm talking. That might be the easiest way to do it um, here. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining either live today or on uh, the YouTube uh, recording here. Mario, thanks for giving us a wonderful uh, idea of what's going on with ISO 20022 here and how we can use it within the blockchain world and uh, finishing off 2023 with the bang uh, thing. So thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your year. And we'll see you on the other side of uh, January 1st. Bye for now. Okay, you talk. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Tom. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Good evening. <laughs>